Hi, welcome to Beyond the Fundamentals. In this video, we're gonna talk about 2 Thessalonians 2.13. I have a short clip on 2 Thessalonians 2.13. It's less than eight minutes long, but it's embedded in a much longer video on election word occurrence analysis. And um, you may remember that from back in April of 2019. I highly recommend, if you haven't seen that, to go look at election word occurrence analysis. But there is a segment on there that's about seven minutes and 40 something seconds long that deals with 2 Thessalonians 2.13. I have a longer video on 2 Thessalonians 2.13, but this is a shorter clip. And so to make it more easily accessible, if you want to see a video on 2 Thessalonians 2.13 and why it does not support Calvinism, I've separated this clip out for you from that video so that you can just watch it. So here's the clip. Now, as soon as you start talking about election, you start pointing out the fact that election never, ever refers to anybody ever being chosen for salvation. There will be a few Calvinists who come up and pipe up with 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 13. And there are many reasons why this does not apply, and we'll talk about it briefly, but I have an entire video. Now, I looked at that video recently, and it's from a while back, and it... Um, I wish I could do it again. I might do it again one day, all right? But it's from a while back, but it goes in the, into the details of why this does not support Calvinism. And briefly to look at 2 Thessalonians 2.13, it is a different Greek word than all the other Greek words that are used for election and chosen, okay? This one only shows up three times, and let's look at how it's used. But we are bound to give thanks to God always for you, brethren, beloved of the Lord, because God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the Spirit, and belief in the truth. And a Calvinist thinks that from the beginning there must be from, you know, before the foundation of the world. But actually it says from the beginning, not from before the beginning, okay? But the beginning here is, is the beginning of Paul's ministry there, not the beginning of the foundation of the world. And so there are several different aspects. Earlier in the, in the chapter, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, there is the warning of the forgery. You know, I, I beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind or troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter, as from us, that that day of Christ is at hand. So there are three things that could forge a false message, a bad spirit, a bad word, or a bad letter coming their way, talking about the future in a bad way. And that future aspect is key. And they're saying something wrong. And so Paul is trying to set them straight on this wrong thing that they don't have to worry about that. So there's the forgery. And then there's a deception that they have to worry about in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 10. When that man of wicked does come, he's going to have all deceivableness and unrighteousness and then that perish. Why? Because they were not elect before the foundation of the world? No, because they received not the love of the truth. See, in Calvinism, people are arbitrarily chosen unconditionally before the foundation of the world, either for salvation or for reprobation. But in the Bible, it's because of things that occur in time and because of things that they do. Because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion, that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Now, if you're a Thessalonian, and somebody's been writing false letters to you, you might flip out at that point and think that, oh no, these forgeries have caused me to believe a lie. I am one of these horrible people that have been condemned to believe a lie. You know, my goose is cooked. And Paul here is reassuring them, no, that's not what's going on. And there's an aspect of the future here. So you see that word chosen you to salvation, okay? There's a, there's a future aspect there. Remember, the beginning of the chapter is about the future aspect of salvation by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him. How are you going to get to that, in other words? How are you going to get to that point? And it, that word salvation there is used not in the sense of conversion, not the time you get saved, but the time of the glorification of the body, how, how Peter uses it in 1 Peter 1, 5, and 9, who are, kept by the faith, who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation. Notice that word through faith. That's the vehicle is faith, belief in the truth. Through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time, receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your soul. So the salvation, the glorification aspect of salvation, when Jesus comes and are gathering together unto him, is a future thing. So God has chosen them to get there through something, all right? 
Now the other uses for this word, Philippians 1.22, Paul says, yet what I shall choose, I want not. He's clearly talking about something he wants to choose. God's not doing any choosing there. So that doesn't apply to for or against Calvinism. Hebrews 11.25, talking about Moses choosing rather to su suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. So Moses there is choosing a path to suffer affliction. So that's not God choosing people for anything. So if this Greek word is used in a Calvinistic way, it would only have, this would be the only occurrence of it. There would be no other example of it. Second Thessalonians 2.13 would be the only thing you'd have to go off for the Greek word being used for this. Now there are some lies going around. We see in Acts 15.1 that there are people teaching lies. And certain men which came down from Judea taught the brethren and said, Except ye be circumcised after the law of Moses, ye cannot be saved. And then we see in Acts 15, 24, when they're correcting this issue, James is telling them, for as much as we have heard, write these guys letters and say these things. We have heard that certain which went out from us here at Jerusalem have troubled you Gentiles out there in Galatia and everywhere else with words subverting your souls, making a catastrophe out of your souls, saying ye must be circumcised and keep the law of Moses to whom we gave no such commandment. So those are some lies going out there. There's some lies. There's a threat of deception. There's concern about the future. There are some forgeries from a spirit or by word or by letter going around with false information. And we know that some of the lies are that you have to be circumcised and keep the law in order to be saved. So what Paul is telling these people is that God hath from the beginning, from the start of our ministry, God has chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the spirit and belief in the truth, not circumcision and keeping the law or whatever else some lie might be told to these people. Have we believed the lie? Okay. And Paul's reassuring them, no, look, what we've told you from the beginning is the truth. Paul is not telling these people that they have personally been chosen to be saved. He's telling them that they've been chosen to get to glorification through belief in the truth and sanctification of the Spirit. Sanctification of the Spirit and belief in the truth. In other words, those are the vehicles that are going to get you there. And you could say 2 Thessalonians 2.13 to any lost person who stays lost. I could look a lost person dead in the eye who I know is going to go to hell if I happen to be able to know that somehow. And I could say, God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the spirit and belief in the truth. You don't have to keep the law or be circumcised or whatever else somebody might be saying, some other lie somebody might be saying, making them think that glorification is somehow something that they can't attain to, they can't get to. And Paul here is reassuring them that, no, you have been told the truth. So you could say that to any lost person. This has nothing to do with individuals being selected to be saved. It has to do with people in that time period. Hey, we're not under the law anymore. And the appropriation method of salvation in the tribulation period, whatever that's going to be, that's not what's happening right now. Right now, we're dealing with sanctification of the spirit and belief in the truth. That's what's going to get you to salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. So don't worry about all these other deceptions floating out there. If this is what you believe, you're good to go. That's what's happening there. So I'm not going to spend any more time on 2 Thessalonians 2.13. We can rule that out. It doesn't support Calvinism. If any Calvinist thinks it does, they're just admitting they don't understand anything about context. And if you want more information, you can go watch the other video on 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 13, where we go into more detail about that. So let me know if you'd like to see more shorter clips like this. Thanks for watching. May the Lord bless you and good day.